In-house 3D printing is one of the most cost-effective production methods for prototypes, one-offs, and custom parts. 3D printers don't require expensive tooling or lengthy setup, so they can produce parts up to 80 to 95% cheaper than traditional tools like machining or outsourcing to service providers. But when comparing the cost of different 3D printers and to accurately calculate the cost per part, there's more to consider than just sticker prices. Variables like the cost of equipment ownership, materials, and labor, which can drastically change depending on the throughput and your specific needs, are important factors to think about before deciding on which solution is right for you. In this video, we compare the costs for three of the most common 3D printing technologies for plastics, FDM, SLA, and SLS. Fixed costs, such as the cost of the 3D printer, service contracts, installation, and maintenance make up the equipment ownership cost. These are the costs you need to pay regardless of whether your printer stands idle or produces dozens of parts a week. Calculate a rough per part attribution for these costs by adding up all of the forecasted fixed costs over the lifetime of the machine and then divide it by the number of parts that it is expected to produce. Equipment ownership cost can become almost negligible when you divide it among the thousands of parts a machine can produce over its lifetime. Generally, FDM 3D printers offer the lowest entry cost to 3D printing. SLA 3D printers offer higher accuracy and a much smoother surface finish at the lowest cost, but generally carry a marginally higher price tag. SLS 3D printing has only recently become available in smaller, more affordable benchtop solutions, but it's still priced considerably higher than both FDM or SLA. Raw materials and other consumables required to create parts are variable costs that are highly dependent on the number of parts you're producing. When calculating material costs, measure the amount of material that's required to create a single part and multiply it by the cost of the material. Also, make sure to include support structures, waste, and any other consumables necessary to produce the parts. On average, FDM materials usually cost the least, but a higher need for support structures and discrete support materials that are required for more complex parts can substantially increase material costs. SLA materials usually carry a slightly more premium price tag. SLS material costs are in between FDM and SLA, but because SLS 3D printing requires no support structures, an unfused powder can be reused material cost can be significantly lowered. Labor often gets overlooked, even though it can have a substantial impact on part cost, especially at higher print volumes. While desktop 3D printers generally require less labor than traditional manufacturing methods, the workflow for setting up and maintaining the printers, along with post-processing the parts, can still be fairly labor-intensive. In most cases, setting up and maintaining FDM printers is fairly easy. Post-processing parts can be fast too, but only for simple parts and rough prototypes. Complex parts require support structures that either break away or need to be dissolved in water or using chemicals. Achieving a better surface quality often requires lengthy manual sanding and finishing. When it comes to setup and maintenance, SLA printers are even easier and faster than FDM. Post-processing for SLA includes washing parts in a solvent and, depending on the material, also post-curing the parts. However, these steps can be automated to minimize time and labor. Thanks to light touch supports, support removal is quick and parts have a high surface quality right out of the printer. SLS 3D printers require more setup time for handling the powder material and considerably more maintenance between prints, but that's normally divided among many parts in a single build. Because of this, post-processing SLS parts can be the least labor intensive of the three processes when processing a full batch of parts. Parts just need to be removed from the powder that surrounds them and cleaned of the excess material. To 
To sum up, FDM will get you the cheapest parts if you're printing only relatively simple prototypes in limited numbers. SLA offers higher quality at a slight premium, but the difference quickly diminishes when you print complex designs or larger batches due to the less labor-intensive post-processing. Lastly, SLS is the most cost-effective process for producing medium to large volumes of high-quality functional parts. However, costs will differ from manufacturer to manufacturer. Make sure to ask the right questions before making a purchase.